Hello and welcome to Path Made Easy. Today we have a case of a peripheral giant cell granuloma. Now on the surface of this biopsy we have paracaratinized stratified squamous epithelium and I'm not going to talk about that anymore because the area of interest is in the underlying connective tissue. So this uh, biopsy is from the gingivae and if we zoom out, you can see that the, the lesion has a somewhat nodular outline. So this would have appeared as a swelling or epulis on the gum. Now, if we look at the connective tissue in more detail, hopefully you can appreciate that there are multiple large cells. OK, and this one in particular is very large. But the thing of note is that they have multiple nuclei okay so each of these large cells is a multi-nucleated giant cell and that is the hallmark cell of this pathology as well as the multi-nucleated giant cells the surrounding connective tissue has some mesenchymal kind of spindled or ovoid type cells which are these ones maybe a modified form of a fibroblast and we can also see erythrocytes or red blood cells scattered throughout the lesion. So all of this connective tissue is replaced by this hemorrhagic stroma containing multinucleated giant cells. Now this particular pathology or pathological appearance isn't entirely specific for a peripheral giant cell granuloma and you can see similar histology in a central giant cell granuloma that's occurring within bone and also conditions such as hyperparathyroidism and cherubism. However, if the lesion is limited to the gingivae, then this will be a peripheral giant cell granuloma, which is considered a reactive proliferation, usually to some form of trauma or irritation, and they are cured by excision. Recurrence rates vary, but perhaps up to about 10%, but that tends to be when the underlying bone hasn't been corrected. If they do recur, it's just another simple excision. So this is a peripheral giant cell granuloma. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like our channel and subscribe. Thank you.